So I finished another commercial job, this time for Epson uh, and their inky characters, which were quite fun to put together because they were a nice mixture of 3D and grease pencil for the character elements. Anyway, this is not what that video is about. This video is about uh, the compositing workflow that, or the post-processing that gets added on top of the render after the fact. Uh, I just thought I'd take you through it because it's, it's a new way I like to work now, uh, particularly to make the scene look a little bit more organic. So I'm just going to mute everything here. And we start with a very crunchy render, and this is because in our render settings in the column management, oops, there we go, the view transform hasn't been applied yet because we're doing that in the compositor. So if we look here, we have our raw output. It pipes through a load of pre-processed stuff here, and then we get to our convert color space. And that changes from our linear to the AGX base. And we also have an exposure adjustment here uh, and a color adjustment, but I don't think I actually ended up using that as well as some color correction after the color space conversion, which for me um, feels a lot nicer as well. Like if you've ever adjusted your photo in Photoshop with curves, for example, this would feel a lot more natural actually adjusting uh, the image after the color transforms. Okay, let's move back. Uh, before the color transforms, we have some other additions here. First of all, we have some noise, which gets overlaid. So a texture that has a time offset. So it shuffles around. And if we zoom in, you can kind of see what this is doing. So grain on, grain off. So this is just a noise texture and that texture is just created in the texture editor section here. And then we have another multiply, which adds on a vignette. So if we zoom way out here, you kind of see what it's doing. Then we have glare, which doesn't do a huge amount. You can see it kind of on the spoon here, picks out some of those highlights. Bit of lens distortion, uh, kind of extreme color correction there. I'm not sure why that was there. And here is uh, a kind of mock unsharp mask. So let's just unmute everything. So it takes the output from the color space transform blurs it, subtracts it from itself to get this kind of edge mask here. Then we add 0.5 of just white, just so we can bring the mid-tone back up to uh, mid-gray. Then we desaturate everything and overlay it on top of itself. And if we crank up that overlay, you can kind of see just how much the sharpening is doing. So let's just look at it. So sharpening on, sharpening off. And you know, that's turned considerably down so it doesn't look like over crispy. And then right at the end of the chain here, we have an aspect ratio tester, which I found really handy as this is uh, an oversized square ratio because we needed to deliver to 16.9 as well as 9.16. And if we adjust the opacity and put it, put the wide tool in the middle, you can kind of see that we can sort of get a one by one uh, version of it as well. And within this group, we just have two box masks with the right aspect ratios blended together and adjustable via this group here. Now we're over in Blender 5 beta and I'm pretty excited to see that the majority of the node setup I did previously exists now as presets. Um, so we can, for example, drag on some sensor noise here 
and that drops in. Looks better than the version I put together as well, which is good. A uh, bit of vignette here. Let's add that before. Okay, kind of extreme, but you know, we can adjust things by the looks of it. Nice. Very nice. Yep, so that's nice. What else have we got? Ooh, split toning. Hmm. Unsharp mask. Excellent. Um, I wonder what this looks like before and after the color space transform. Wow. Okay, so, you know, you can go super sharp if you really want to. So this is after the color transform. Let's just slap it before. Mm, kind of looks like it clamps the highlights quite a bit there. Yeah, I could think that put that afterwards. We can take the radius down and the factor down. And maybe the threshold up just a tiny bit to avoid some of the sharpening some of the noise. Cool. Yeah, just that threshold that was um, cutting off a lot of it. And just out of interest, let's see what the old, the um, tune image thing does here. Contrast. Ooh, let's chug in a bit now. Wait a minute. Do, 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 do. Performance, compositor, GPU, that'll probably be Y. Yeah, that's better. Okay, yeah. Just some nice slider settings here. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, obviously not gonna crank all that up. But yeah, so a lot of the <laughs> a lot of the uh, settings that I had sort of built up myself uh, are represented here in uh, Blender 5 beta versions, presumably in the release version as well. So, fantastic. Hopefully some of that rambling was useful to you. It was a fun project. There were lots of sort of difficulties throughout. Some of the grease pencil thing uh, stuff was really interesting because uh, we came across some anti-aliasing issues at the time on Blender 4.4.3 uh, that I believe has been fixed ever since 4.5 where you actually have uh, sampling options for grease pencil. I, I have written a script as well for an entire breakdown but to be honest it takes a long time to sort of record and edit stuff so I'm not entirely sure whether I'll put it together. If you have made it this far in the video also uh, there is a sale on at CG Boost now. I have a course on there called Robotic Planet. You may want to check that out and uh, yeah thanks for watching and hope you have a good day, evening, night, whatever. Right bye. Surroundings. The source of this frankly disturbing sound is Snailbot, sporting a 12cm subwoofer and a 3cm tweeter with 40 watts of output that blasts out clumsily produced rap music, which unsettles nearby ostrich bots. Easily startled, they spring into action. Their powerful and agile hydraulics carrying them forward with pinpoint accuracy. Well, most of them. The ostrich bot shakes off its contact with this ancient relic, Little is known about these strange formations. Leading researchers believe that they were created along with the rest of this world by an all-powerful entity, a being with unfathomable strength and perfect eyesight.